your dog's been scratching, is there something in the kitchen that's gonna stop the itching? Find out in this video. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to get a copy of my free book. You can click the link in the box below for more information. Pipster has had a problem lately. Pipster, wanna tell them what your problem is? What have you been doing? Oh. Pippy is itchy. Oh my God, I'm just full of rhyming words today. Holy cow. Are there some things that are currently in your kitchen now that can make a big difference in decreasing the level of itchiness, otherwise known as pruritus, in your dog. Surprisingly, there are about three different things I wanna show you today. The best one I wanna save for last, you gotta stick around to find out what that is. The first one, I've talked about it in the past, but I don't think I've fully conveyed how potentially useful it really can be and how it's been shown to be super helpful in people. What is it? You've all heard me talk about it. It is Pippi. Ta-da. <laughs> Something you can also eat. Coconut oil. Yum. Okay. First, it's markedly antibacterial. Uh, in one study, they found with people that have Coconut oil was applied topically to a person who's got a skin infection staph, which is what most dogs secondarily have to an allergy. It helped reduce 95% of the population of bacteria. So great natural antibacterial, and many of our dogs have that. So an easy way to apply it is, you know, taking one or two tablespoons of hard coconut oil, like we have here, Pippi. Let's take about over a teaspoon because you're gonna eat it all, Pippi. Good girl. I'm gonna have you guys emulsify it. <coughs> There's Pippi's trying to eat all my coconut oil. God, you're Pippi. You're taking away all the Pipster. Pipster eating all my remedies. Can't do that. I'm uh, just gonna emul Pippi. We're gonna emulsify that so we can spread that onto your skin. My help if it's warmed up a little bit. Still pretty cold here in the morning. It was like two degrees out when I got up. There was ice on top of the boat cover. So it's still cool. Anyway, regardless, here we got the nice soft coconut smushy stuff. So if your dog has these kind of, especially red raised little bumps all along the edge of the skin or their groin, or they've really been doing a lot of it itching and licking, likely they've got a secondary staph infection. Real good option of just applying coconut oil topically. So I just got a little bit on the tip of my finger. I mean, you're just gonna find the red area of your dog's skin as she's got here in her groin. Just loosely cover it all with coconut oil. You can easily do that two or three times a day. There, Pippi, and if you do lick it off, it's completely safe for you. There. Another variation of that, which I do wanna try, and I'm gonna try on Pippi, is adding in one mil of a tincture of CBD oil. It's about to here, with about, you know, that two tablespoons of coconut oil is the CBD oil is also markedly anti-inflammatory. So we've got the coconut oil, which is gonna help deal with the bacterial infection. We've got the CBD being anti-inflammatory. I think a really great option topically. So there's my CBD coconut oil combination. Let's apply a little bit topically. And not only will it taste good if Pippi licks it, it may also make her slightly sedate, which might be just good for everybody. Mmm, Pipster. Good girl. Here's your CBD oil, coconut oil. From the fridge, we have a plant you I have all used. I've known about it, but never really put two and two together and thought about the benefits of using this. Uh, for a dog who has red inflamed skin. It's a great natural anti-inflammatory, applied topically inexpensive, been used for people, uh, for things such as mastitis. I'm like, ah, oh, I never think of this. What is it, you may be wondering? Ah, none other than the lowly cabbage. Mm. 
There are certain ingredients in cabbage, especially once it's crushed, that are released, have a specific anti-inflammatory properties. And it makes huge sense. Like, no wonder I've not used this. Now, it's been documented for many, many, many years. So you want to take yourself out a relatively fresh cabbage leaf. What do you think, Pippi? If it doesn't work, you get to eat it. So it's a win-win for Pippi. Well, let's see. We have firm cabbage. Well, let's try to find more of a leaf. Okay, ta-da, we're gonna speed this up. Here we go. Here's a decent sized leaf. Okay, next thing you wanna do, you wanna crush it. You don't wanna eat it. You want to crush the ribs on the cabbage. I'm just using a rolling pin. I'm just trying to break up, because that's what's to release those anti-inflammatory properties. I'm gonna crush the cabbage, Pippi. Okay. Okay, look at that. Great cabbage roller. Holy crap. Looks like I have a new potential career. Okay. <laughs> So here's how the cabbage looks once it's crushed up, just like flattened cabbage. But as you can see, there's a bit of moisture almost oozing out of it. Um, so you've kind of released, you don't really want to pound it or crush it. And then you're actually just applying it. You may even break the ribs with your fingers. Uh, but you can actually just apply that topically onto the area of affected skin. You want to ideally leave it on as a compress, you know, somewhere like 15 to 20 minutes. That may be challenging. Good news, Pippi. Guess what you get to eat? Oh, -ho, you get to eat the remedy. Okay. God. No wonder, no wonder she loves coming to this house. For the third one, we're going to the cupboard. And what do we get? Uh-huh. It's another oil, but it's not an oil that I've discussed in the past. It's this, it's sunflower oil. Oh. So the big benefit of sunflower oil is a big study done with people was finding that it, it could replace the, the fatty layer that the skin loses in atopy or allergy. So what happens is, is you lose that protective barrier in the skin. There's breakdowns in the skin barrier, allergens, you know, such as grass pollen, etc. They penetrate in through the skin, uh, causing your dog to do what Pitchy, Pippi's doing, start to itch and lick. Some of the pharmaceutical companies are now marketing products called ceramides, and they're specifically formulated uh, fatty acid uh, compilations that help rebuild that skin barrier. But you know what a real simple, inexpensive way to do, and they actually found this study wise, and I'll link this, uh, put a link to the study in the notes, I was using sunflower oil. My like, God, inexpensive, so easy, easy thing to put on topically as well as give orally to your dog. So with people that are putting it on topically on the area of affected skin. So ideally, I think if we're gonna rebuild that skin barrier, it's a combination of what we put on topically as well what we put on, give to your dog orally. So I would just take a little bit and just rub it in throughout your dog's coat. Right, you're just kind of giving this little extra oily layer. All right, Pippi. If you guys have a chronic allergic dog, I'd be encouraged you to try it once a day. Do it for a few weeks. Yeah, see if it's gonna be beneficial or not. So there, we're gonna increase the fatty acid. Your dog's gonna look a little greasy, but maybe a lot less itchy. And then the other option, or as well, is give it, why not give it orally? I would start with a small amount, you know, something like Pipster, you know. A teaspoon twice a day. Let's just give her a little half a teaspoon. And let's see if we can get you to consume this. What do you think? Here you go, Pippi. Sunflower, oh wow, you like sunflowers. Perez, you like sunflower oil. So maybe we can help rebuild your fatty acid layer that's, and rebuild your skin barrier. Hmm. So awesome, I mean, it worked in people. No reason why I think it should not work in our dogs. Never been really documented for using veterinary medicine. I encourage you guys to try it. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets of Remedies in the Kitchen to help stop your dog from itching. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to get a copy of my free book. You can click the link in the box below for more information. Thanks, Pipster. Thanks for being such a good little patient. All right, good curl.